Hi, I'm Dala, and today we are diagnosing a no start on this Think City. Let's get started. So, quick story on this car. It was uh, towed here to the shop for me to figure out why it wouldn't start. Some previous workshop has uh, done, done some attempts to get it started. And uh, supposedly they read some fault codes and uh, they replaced the ABS pump in order to get it to start. But this did not help at all. So, now it's my turn to have a go at this. and. Uh, as you can see here, uh, this is supposedly a very common think mod, but it's uh, kind of sketchy to see orange wires uh, in this state. But anyways, uh, let's forget about that and uh, let's try and figure out why this car doesn't start. Uh, let me show you what it looks like inside. So here's the instrumentation cluster and uh, now I'm gonna turn the key. The vacuum pump is very loud, uh, but the car does not start. And you can see here in the lower hand corner, there is a flashing light stating power limit. So something is wrong with the high voltage system. So hmm. let's hook up the laptop. Okay, so since uh, the thing is a very old school EV, it requires some old school hardware to connect to it. So here I have a Windows 7 laptop, an old one, which I have installed some software on. And uh, massive thanks to Jonas Andersson for helping me out with this, who is also one of my Patreon supporters. So massive thanks to him for helping me with this. Uh, I also have a PCAN adapter hooked up here, because uh, the PCAN system was probably the choice when they develop this car so a lot of the software only runs on the with this pecan adapter and i have uh, hooked it up here to the obd2 port and uh, yeah i'm ready to start intercepting some can messages so let's turn the car on and see what it says so the first thing that i was suspecting was the battery since this is a high voltage uh, or something with the high voltage system. So I fired up this uh, program called uh, ComTool and I fetched some data from the battery and uh, I have tried to decipher this to the best of my knowledge and I can't really find any active errors from the battery. There is, there is also this button here in this program to clear all malfunction codes so I ran this sequence and it successfully cleared all active faults, but there were no active faults. So yeah, it didn't help anything. So now that we know that the battery is okay, we can uh, focus on the other modules, such as the PCU. I took some more CAN logs from the OBD2 port and um, Actually, let's cut to another video where I can uh, decipher some of the meaning there and then get back to the car. Okay, so I'm just gonna switch to my main PC for this demonstration here. But uh, what I did next was that I took a raw log file from the Think uh, while it was trying to start, but it failed to start. And let's analyze this file. So, if we open up Savican, which is an excellent uh, free uh, reverse engineering tool, uh, available on github uh, we can load this log file into the program and uh, well this doesn't really tell us much directly but uh, we're very lucky that the think has a database file the translation file for everything that's moving on the bus so this one is available on the think forums and wiki pages so i have taken this uh, dbc file and I have loaded it into the program so I can just cl click this button here that says interpret frames and 
bam, some data has appeared in some some messages. Not all messages, because um, uh, the database file seems to be for the PCU, not the battery. Or I, I assume that this is the battery extra stuff. But the important thing is that we can we can now take a look at messages and content. So by quickly going through these messages, I have already done this, but I found something very interesting. Uh, there was some system error general things that were on. Uh, and I just scrolled down and eventually I found a place here that says uh, let's see if we can find it here. System crash is true and system EPO emergency is also true. So this got me thinking. Uh, what could cause the crash indicator to be on? Because if a, an electric car is crashed, you don't want the high voltage system to turn on because that could uh, electrocute you. So if the vehicle believes that it has crashed, then of course it won't start. So uh, let's take a look at the schematics, how the crash system works. Okay, so here is the wiring diagram. This is for the model year 2011 pre-series wiring diagram that I also found via the Think Wiki page. And uh, yeah, let's scroll down in this uh, document a bit and uh, here is the interesting part. So we can see that there is an inertia switch. Uh, this switch uh, switches off if the vehicle is crashed. So uh, I think this is the kind of circuit that we should investigate. Uh, if we zoom in here a bit, the signal, it starts from the fuse box, uh, goes through a fuse, inertia switch. Then it travels through the traction motor and makes sure that everything's connected. Uh, then it goes into some interlock things and then finally ends up here at the battery. So now that we know what the circuit looks like, uh, we can go and uh, check it on the car. So we are back at the car and uh, the first thing I wanted to check out then was this crash button. I have unbolted it so that I can inspect it. but. Uh, I tried pressing it and it doesn't seem like it was active, this crash circuit. So I will try unhooking it and measure with a multimeter and see if we have any signal traveling here at all. Let's see. Uh, for anyone wondering how this um, impact sensor works, uh, you can hear that it is solid. There's a ball inside, but if I smash it, Oh, the ball got dislodged and the circuit is broken. So in order to reset it, you just press this button, click, and the ball snaps back into place and it conducts electricity again. Pretty cool thing. Okay, so I have my multimeter here. Uh, I'm gonna be measuring the voltage coming out of here. And according to the schematics, there should be 12 volts here. So I'm just gonna touch the lead and uh, what do we get? Two volts? Hmm. That doesn't sound right. It should be 12. Um, let's check the fuse box. So I looked at the schematics and there's a fuse here with 7.5 amp rating that should uh, handle this circuit. And if we look at the fuse, it is clearly burnt to a crisp. So let's install a new fuse and see if we can start the car. Okay, let's see how much impact that fuse had. Ooh, we got some new clicking. Let's try starting it. Ooh! Nice! We have signs of life! And there's a green ready Indicator now glowing also. And we're in park. Wow! One fuse! <laughs> I can't believe it was that simple. Wow! I am really happy with how easy that turned out to be. I mean, the previous people who tried fixing this car, 
uh, they've been replacing parts such as the ABS pump. Uh, who knows, maybe the ABS pump actually was broken also, but the, it was could have been like multiple problems at once. But again, goes to show how easy it is when you have the proper tools to actually troubleshoot a system. If you have the exact intended tools to look at the can of communication and to see what is actually wrong. So uh, I won't be going for a test drive. Uh, sorry for that because uh, the brakes are not hooked up on this vehicle after the ABS pump was, was replaced so I won't be driving it but I will hand it back to the customer and uh, they can take care of the brakes and actually take this car into use now that it works. So I guess that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed watching some real old school EV action. I, I mean this car is extremely old by today's standards. This was like way before the Nissan Leaf was a thing and it's also a piece of um, automotive history and especially since this car also was uh, made in Finland. So yeah, it has been interesting to think of with something like this. Hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you like this type of content, uh, check out my Patreon page also. Dollar out.